right, Taylor T. Carlson, and I've returned with another vinyl haul. Continuing to add to my collection, seems like there's just no stop to this collection, and I really need to get my spending in check, especially with the holidays around the corner. However, as someone who owns a vinyl player now and can play these records, it's hard to stop, and I think anyone that's a music fan will agree with me here. So, gotten a few things from a few stores around town, as well as a few things I've ordered, so we're going to go down the list, and I'll show you what I get. To start off, we got uh, Monty Python's Contractual Obligation album. I absolutely love the guys from Monty Python. They're hilarious, and decades later, their material still holds up. A lot of it's certainly stuff that would not fly today. One of my favorite things about this, you know, it's called the Contractual Obligation album. So you can tell these guys have a sense of humor, but right here, they've even got a, a track list and liner notes that look handwritten. So they were trying to do this in, like, I guess the cheapest looking way possible, and they certainly succeeded there. This has tunes on it like Sit On My Face, and I Bet You They Won't Play This Song On The Radio, and anyone who's a Python fan knows what these songs mean to them. Next up, we got uh, Thin Lizzy, Johnny the Fox, featuring the late great Phil Lynott on vocals and bass, one of their great classic records. Probably best remembered for the tune Don't Believe a Word, arguably my favorite song in their entire catalog, and that's no small statement. There, we've got our liner notes and so forth. Right here, we've got this is one of my favorite finds I made over at Record City the other day. This is White Snake, Love Hunter. Probably best known for its cover art rather than its uh, actual music, although the music on here does not disappoint in the least. I love these old school White Snake records, like back before they became more of a pop AOR style band, a little more bluesy and traditional. And you got the likes of Bernie Marsden and uh, Mickey Moody on guitar here. Of course, David Coverdale on vocals. Neil Murray on bass, who would be in the band, come back and go on more than a few occasions. Duck Dowell on drums, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. And John Lord on keyboards, of course. He was in Deep Purple alongside David Coverdale. Great tunes on here include Walking the Shadow of the Blues, Long Way From Home, Medicine Man, the title track Love Hunter, Outlaw, and of course We Wish You Well, which to this day the band still plays over the loudspeaker every time they finish a concert. And, and there's not really any extra liner notes or lyric sheets or anything in here I can show off, so we'll just move on to the next one. Electric Light Orchestra, or ELO for short. This was the band's first album, which was originally released in America under the name No Answer due to a record company miscommunication, although that story is you know, somewhat debatable. Their first album definitely has a bit more of a classical sound to it, like Baroque elements, as opposed to the later ELO material, which tended to be more pop-friendly, but I like this album for that very reason. And the inner sleeve on this just has, like, uh, you know, record company ads for other releases. But there are some great songs on this album that, even though this record tends to be lost in the fold and forgotten compared to some of their other later releases, there are some excellent tunes to be heard on this album, including 10538 Overture, Look at Me Now, Manhattan Rumble, Stone Temple Pilots actually used Manhattan Rumble as their stage entrance music at one point. And there's, just, there's a little bit of everything on here. It's definitely, like I said, less pop than their later releases, although that's not necessarily a bad thing if that's what you're into. It's also one of the only two ELO releases, along with their second record, that actually features co-founder Roy Wood as part of the band. He would leave the group to start another band called Wizard, spelled with two Z's. And sticking with ELO a little longer, this is Out of the Blue. This is a double album they did in the late 1970s. Might be their best known studio album, actually. Here's the back cover. And you can actually open this up, and it's a sort of panorama on the covers. Then there's panoramic art of the inside of the spaceship, if you look inside the gatefold. And one of the records here actually had the lyric sheet on it when I bought this. Actually, my girlfriend actually found this in the clearance bin over at Record City, and despite the cover looking a little rough, it played fine on my record player. 
Some of their best songs are on this album, including Turn to Stone, Sweet Talking Woman, Night in the City, Mr. Blue Sky, Wild West Hero. If you can only have one ELO album, I would say this is probably the one to have. And another surprising find in the clearance bin, this is The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night, the uh, American version of the soundtrack to the, the band's first film. Here's the back. This has been a little bit, you know, drawn on and was not in very good shape. Probably why it was in the clearance bin. But I like the American version of this soundtrack as opposed to the UK one. Because even though the UK one had more songs, this actually has the instrumentals that were featured in the film that were not used on the UK soundtrack. So it's kind of nice to have those somewhere. And it's got this really trippy looking United Artists Records sleeve inside. I hadn't seen one like that before. Have you made any good finds at your local record store lately? Do you have any good record stores in your area? Comment down below and let me know what you've bought or where you visited recently and picked up some records. Also remember to subscribe to my channel for additional content and like this video if you found it helpful or interesting. I'm Taylor T. Carlson and I will see you next time.